The in-classroom stuff is, is very much stepping stone material. You hope as a teacher that kids will develop a love of learning and want to keep learning, but ultimately your role in society is so much greater than just your own learning. It's about what you do with that learning. And what you do with that learning typically involves other people. Well, Joyce and I, we came to Beijing 14 years ago, uh, we, 16 years ago rather, we, in 1994. We went uh, to visit an orphanage in Tianjin, uh, close to Beijing. Most of the people that came on that visit were, went to play with the older children in the orphanage and Joyce and I, Joyce being a doctor, she asked if she could go up to the medical area for the orphanage. Well, we both went upstairs into the area where they were, they basically got the babies and the younger kids. What we saw there was really awful and it really broke our hearts. I mean, there was one area where uh, the babies were just left and not attended to, obviously were dying. She turned around to me and she said, well, I don't know, she said, but I really feel like God's asking us to get into a river. She said, I have no idea where we're going to end up. She said, but I'd like to stay in China build our home and build a foster home. We built the first one, we had 12 beds for the first year. Each year it was like we would say, we aren't going to do any more, but suddenly we'd look back at the end of the year and find that we'd almost doubled in size. And we decided by then we would take babies that were under six months old that had a physical problem we could get fixed. So we feel like we focused in on a little patch because so in the orphanage system, there's so many needs, it's hard. We also felt really strongly that Every child that we took into our care, we would try as much as was possible to look after that child as if they were our own kids. And our savings can go into it to a certain extent, and to start it off, that's what we did, was we used a lot of our own funds to, to actually get the thing going. But that runs out, you know, you, you don't, can't continue to do that sort of thing. Yeah, our running costs are around about 150,000, US dollars a month which is, you know, over $2 million a year. In some of it, I know where it's coming from, but there's a big part of it that I haven't got a clue where it's going to come from. And so we end up, we sit with about two or three months running costs in a day. We have our website and we have a newsletter. That's as much as we do. We just tell people about the needs. Today, we look after, I mean, it varies a bit. It's over 300 babies, definitely. So we have about 500 odd employees. Uh, around the country. It's a hard place to work, it's hard for the nurses because there's a lot of these babies do die but you know they cared for and loved and we do what we can you know, and, and so that's been really successful. if it's hard or if it's, you know, don't the kids get wear you out and things like that. And I think that as long as I'm fit, like as long as I've gotten enough sleep, the kids just give me energy. And they're so wonderful. They're so smart. They're so beautiful. They're so amazing. Um, each one of them. Like even at first when I, when I was looking at the website, I thought, I don't know if I can handle these really medically sensitive kids, these kids who have bladders inside out outside of their bodies. Or, um, the, the, the cleft lips or anything and once you actually see one of these kids you see immediately how they're human and they are they are just like us. So when we touched on China we were very skeptical about whether the home actually needs our help because we see so much influence and um, wealth in China. Yeah but during the tour ride right from the city area to the countryside where the home is located we actually could see a change in scenery and they are less affluent there with lack of healthcare, lack of hospitals, lack of medical facilities in general. So through our trip there, we actually realised that the stereotype that the home doesn't need help at all is not very true. Because they need more access to facilities and they need more awareness created overseas. We are actually grateful that there are certain in individuals and organisations that actually provide um, monetary donation and it actually sponsored uh, and subsidised uh, our ticket guide and also some supplies 
um, that we brought over to China. One of the main reasons we went to China was not only to bring medical supplies over there, which they really need, like clear bottles, but as well as um, raising awareness for what the home is and what it's doing. Yeah, especially when this home has uh, actually caters to special needs of these children. This home is very unlike any orphanage in Singapore. I guess it's not just about the money or supplies that we bring to this home. It's also about creating a, a greater awareness for such an orphanage. Yeah, it's like, as more people know about this home, the more they can do something about it, and the more kids will really benefit from all the donations and the visitations that we're probably going to get when this work gets out. In order to ensure the sustainability of the entire project, we linked up with the International School of Beijing and they generously offered their help in the future with collecting donations and also bring the supplies over. And since they're going over on a weekly basis, in the future if NUS students do want to visit, it makes it a lot easier to coordinate such a visit. On a practical level, I really think it's true that we must leave our set of books aside for a little while and go out and have a different kind of experience. Eventually, I think the two connect on a number of levels. No matter what our subject is, we eventually deal with humans over it. If we're too isolated, even for the years of university, if we're completely isolated from the real world, then it's more of a challenge and a transition to come out of it again. And I think it is, it's healthier if we can stay engaged with the world all the way through. Obviously, the hope is it remains a, a permanent part of their life. For some people that'll be um, a case of donations, for other people it'll be physical involvement you know, and there are obviously lots of different reasons why people would do one or the other and there's no judgement on that but you still hope that at some level there's community service involved. To have a servant heart, to be able to give and really it sounds so cliche but to, to give to receive from giving it's 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 so true.